Now that you got all your nerves out, go ahead and sit on down, and I need you to grab your clicker, and we're going to answer this question. Now that you got all your nerves out, all right, whoo, you're going to grab your clicker and go ahead and show me your answer to this question. Thank you. Gotcha. Ooh. <laughs> All right. Y'all. See, I knew there was a reason why y'all were here today. So, here's the deal. We're either really, really right, or this is gone wrong. What do you think? Are you, how confident are you about this? A hundred percent? Are you sure? Okay, so let's drum roll then. Yes! Okay, warm it up, firecracker. A hundred percent, y'all. That's the first time we've ever gotten a hundred percent. Guess what? We need to do three firecrackers in a row. Are you ready? One, two, three. So close, so close, so close. That is amazing. So what that's telling me is that anybody can come up to this board and work this problem out right now. Uh, Kaylee, come on down. <laughs> so, so, you do multiplication right here. So negative 4 times negative 9 is... 36 since it's two negatives and it makes a positive. And I went ahead and put this one right here so we can add the uh, exponents and that'll be y and Awesome job. Thank you so much, Kaylee. All right. So here's what I need you to do. Okay. Go ahead and pull out your notes for me. So yesterday, we used the product rule to simplify monomials, and today, by the end of class, you will be able to use the power rule to simplify monomials. The agenda for today is to be able to multiply uh, monomials. That was a clicker we just did, and now we're getting ready to go into the introduction, which is to discuss exponent rules using round robin with your team. So what that's going to look like is this. Okay, we've already been talking about all of the different rules for exponents, adding, subtracting, and multiplying. So I want you to talk to your team about what you learned so far. We're going to start with number ones. Okay, so number ones you're going to share, and then we're going to go around. As the timer clicks, we go to the next person. So start ahead. Go ahead and say what you know about the exponent rules. Okay, so first off, what you have here is, uh, never really did that All right. So can I get someone to share something that you said about the exponent rules that you have learned so far? Elena. Even when you're multiplying, you still add the Very good. Thank you so much. Good job. Way to break track is fine. Take your time. Will. Good. Very good. EJ. Perfect. If the variables are not the same, then you rewrite it. Excellent job. So we're going to take notes, use, talk about using the power rule, and then we're going to do a quiz today. Are you all excited about it? Okay. We're going to see who's going to win today. So then we're going to close by making some connections and doing a real-world application problem, and then I'll give you some time to reflect at the very end of class on how you uh, feel about today. You do have homework this weekend because you're going to be gone for a long time. So your homework is to choose a column from the Powers of Monomials homework page. Okay, that's your homework for tonight. 
So let's get started with our notes. The powers of monomials, it says to raise a monomial to a power, you use the power rule. Now, yesterday we learned about the product rule, and the product rule says we multiply the coefficients and we add the exponents. Well, the product rule is an extension of, of the power rule is an extension of the product rule. So what it says is that if we have x to the a power in parentheses and you still have a small exponent up top, that means we're going to raise that to the power, and then we're going to say that that's x raised to the a power times b. So what it's telling us is that the power rule tells us that we are supposed to multiply the exponents. That's the difference. The power rule says that we're supposed to multiply the exponents. Okay? So let's look at an example. We have x to the second power raised to the fifth power. What does that really mean in regular life terms? Katerin. Very good. According to the power rule, we're supposed to say, bring down our x, and we're going to multiply 2 times 5 to get 10, and we're done. All right? Now, on number 2, there are multiple parts inside the parentheses. Here's my question. Think about it, okay? What property have we learned about this school year where you take the number on the outside, wait for it, wait for it, and multiply it times everything on the inside. Raise your hand if you know. Wait for it. Oh, yeah, yep, yep, light bulb, I see it. Multiply the number on the outside times everything on the inside. Hint, hint, donuts. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, so on the count of three, one, two, three. Oh, y'all some geniuses. So we're going to distribute this four inside our parentheses the same way we would when we were doing the distributive property. So what that's going to look like, going to look like some multiplication there. So m to the second power raised to the fourth power, we're going to say 7 times 4, and what do we get? You might need your calculator a little later, so you might want to grab it now. And then n to the fourth power raised to the fourth power, that's going to be n to the 16th power, absolutely, and we're doing Okay? So looking at number three, the third example. We have CD to the second power raised to the third power. So here's my question. What should I do? Conley. Okay, that's a very good option. David? How did you know that? Okay, so there's an imaginary one there, very good. And then? So then you would multiply 1 times 3 and it would give you c to the third power. Good. Then 3 times 2 and that would give you b to the sixth power. Excellent. Okay. How many of you, that's the answer you had? Okay, wonderful job. Very good, very good. Okay, so um, thumbs up, sideways or down, the power rule. Thumbs up, sideways or down. Okay, very good. Okay, so it, here's some additional notes. It says examples with coefficients. What is a coefficient? The number, the number go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> the number in front of the variable is the coefficient. So it says you're supposed to raise the coefficient to the power. That means we're going to multiply it times itself. Okay, and then we're going to simplify using the power rule. What does the power rule tell us to do with our exponents? I can't hear you. I, can, I still can't hear you. Oh, okay, a little power to it. So, did you get my joke? A little power to it? Okay, cool. All right, so simplify using the power rule says we're supposed to multiply the exponent. So let's look at number four. If I'm distributing, five to the second power means five squared, correct? What's five squared? Twenty-five. Very good. And then x to the seventh power raised to the second power, I'm supposed to multiply the exponent. So it's x to the... 14th power, and we're done. How you feeling? Good. Pretty good. Ask me a question or tell me something you understand about the process of power. Jaden. 
they are. They are two different parts of that one term. There is the coefficient, which is the 5. So it's like we did this. We said, okay, 5, and we want to raise it to the second power. So that's 5 times 5. That gives us 25. Then we said we want to take x to the seventh power. X to the seventh power. And we want to raise that to the second power. So we multiply 7 times 2 to get x to the 14th power. Okay? Elena? I understand that even if the exponent is outside the parentheses, you still distribute Very good. Will? How did I get 25? Somebody want to help, help him explain that? EJ? Perfect. Does that make sense, Will? Okay. You see that we did 5 times 5? You got it? That's perfect. That's perfect. Light bulb. Light bulb. I like it. Conley, you have something to add? Oh, never mind. You see it now? Keith? Mm -hmm. Now you can you multiply the coefficient along with the other exponents. Very good. You got it. Okay, so thumbs up, sideways, or down. Is there one on here that you'd like me to work? Of course. Yeah. Oh, no. Nine? Why you want me to work number nine? Because it's got a fraction, Miss Sean. But guess what? I bet you it's going to be easy. So we said we distribute, right? All right, so that is one-half raised to the third power. That means one-half how many times? Three times. So one-half times one-half times one-half. See, the light bulb already came on, and y'all didn't even finish the problem yet. So one times one times one. I thought somebody was going to say three, my bad. One. All right, two. Take your time. Times two. Take your time. Times two. Lord, you didn't take your time. Get your calculator. Go and verify it. Mm -mm. Verify it in the calculator. <laughs> I got him. I, it was a hesitation. It was a hesitation. <laughs> so I was like, wait, no. I didn't get that. <laughs> I don't know. You know what, baby? You was back up there, that other problem. It's okay. You, you were looking at number five. That's what it was. Okay. So have we verified our answer? What is it? It's six. Oh my God. Six, six. You don't add any multiplier. Two times two times two. Four times two. Oh, y'all. I got you with the hesitation move. That's what it was. That's what it was. Okay. So then we're going to distribute again. A to the third power raised to the third power. We do multiply right here. So what do we get? A to the ninth power. B to the fourth raised to the third power. What do we get? 12. Oh, somebody other than Kaylee because she's going to be on restriction. I don't know why y'all ain't talking. Okay. So that's B to the 12th and C to the... Okay. Because you know she's going to outshine y'all. Y'all don't let her outshine y'all. Because she will talk the whole time if you let her. Okay. Okay. Then step up. I'm trying to hear. Okay. So are we better? You okay with the fractions? You're multiplying that fraction times itself that many times. That's it. And then you just add your exponents. That's all. Okay? All right. So let's put it all together. Everything we've learned this week, we're going to go ahead and put it all together. Let's look at number 14. So think about the operations of PEMDAS. Order of operations, we learned that way back in eighth grade. We re revisited in ninth grade, and we re revisited all throughout high school and even into college and in your regular life as you go and be an adult. So... We need to see, do we have any parentheses? Be careful. No. no. Thank you. Do we have any exponents? Yes, we do. So we're going to do the exponents first. So we're using the power rule to do the exponents first. Yes, sir? How do we not have parentheses? How do we not have parentheses? Somebody want to explain why we don't have parentheses? How do we not have parentheses? Keith? We're using the parentheses as multiplication. Perfect. We're using the parentheses as multiplication. See this being side by side? That was representing multiplication. It's not representing an operation or a problem inside parentheses that we work. Okay? Very good question. Thank you so much, Conley. So we're going to raise this to a power. Two to the third power is? We just did it. We just did it. We just did it. Okay, I'm just making sure. It's eight. We said two times two times two is eight. So 
A to the second power raised to the third power is A to the sixth power. Okay, bring down our plus sign. Now we're ready to go on to multiplication. There's a different rule for multiplication, though. Right? Y'all remember? Okay. Think about it. Okay. So what should we do first? There's some people I haven't heard from yet who hadn't talked to me. Kaden. Good. Put a one in front. And then what do we do next? Mm-mm. Some people I hadn't heard from. Okay, so let's do this one first, the coefficients. We got one and we have three. So one times three, Jaden. Yeah, good job. All right, and then we've got multiplication of exponents, which tells us we're supposed to do what to those exponents? Elena, we're supposed to add them up. So that's going to be A to the what power? Six power. There we go. You got it. Um, raise your hand if you know what's next. Raise your hand if you know what's, ne what's next. Okay. What's next, class? Add them together. Why do we add them together? They're like terms. Okay, there y'all go. Y'all waking up. So when we add them together, what is it going to be? Eleven. A to the sixth power. You got it. You are right. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody here but me. Okay, 11 A to the sixth power, Keith. They're starting to get the power. They're starting to get the power. They're starting to feel it. They're starting to feel that power. Okay. Number 14, what you got? Two times two times two, right? So two times two. It's okay. I'm going to finish it for you, though. Four times two is eight. See, in our minds, when we see a two and a three, we think six. It's automatic. That's why you need to do the side math. How much do we talk about the side math and how important that the side math is? Sometimes on those standardized tests, if you don't do the side math, you've got all your process right, and you make a small minor mistake like this, and it throws your entire answer off. So be careful and do that side math, Kaylee. X1 is supposed to be 12. On which form? 14. On 14? How is the X1 supposed to, what is the X1 supposed to be, uh, Cora, and why? It's supposed to be 6 because you don't add them. Why don't we add these? They are like terms and they're supposed to say the thing, say the thing, stay, there's, let me restate. They are like terms and they're supposed to stay the same. Absolutely. Okay. Is that good? Is that better? Okay. Yes, sir. They're both twos. Why didn't you get both eights? Which one, baby? For the exponent and coefficient, they're both twos on 14. The coefficient. Go ahead. Go ahead. Talk to him. Take your time. But the twos is exponents, so they're adding together. Oh, okay. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much, Corey. You rocking it. Uh, you, you, you want to swap? Okay. <laughs> All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go switch gears real quick. Okay, let's switch gears. We're going to go to quizzes. Listen carefully to my directions before you start moving. Every single one of you needs one piece of paper. And then put your binder under your desk. You need a pencil and a piece of paper. Partner A's. Partner A's. If you're a team of three, only one partner needs to grab an iPad. If you're a team of four, then both A's will get an iPad because you're working with your face partner. All right? So, partner A's, you're going to go to the back and grab an iPad. And you're going to go straight to quizzes, and then I'll pull up the screen where the login information is. Are we ready? Here we go. One, two, three.
All right. Oh, it's a Santa Claus. All right, all right. Thank you, Jim. Go back and look at it and see what, what happened. Come on. That's it. That's it. That's as big as it's going to be. You sad? I'm really sad because we're supposed to get all. You were supposed to get them all. Hey, listen. Let me let me let me tell you something. Sometimes in life, you're not gonna get them all right. But guess what? That doesn't mean you're a horrible person. It means that you know. It means that you're human. That's what that means. You're human, and it's okay. But I could have been a better human. Well, I don't. I think that you're the best human you could be today. So go ahead and click it. And let's look at it and work backwards. Go back and look at the notes and see where you made an error. Let's go and see if we can't figure out the error. Rework it for me. Okay, perfect. Okay, here we go. Caitlin Conley. Hey. Will and Catter. <laughs> Elena. The, the, the Power 3, they were rooting against y'all the whole time. <laughs> so, here we go. Class accuracy. That was 84% correct questions today. Warm it up for a firecracker. One, two, three. The toughest question was number 10. Five out of five did not get it right. Uh-oh, that's one we need to talk about. Number six, it took you 79.01 seconds. And then here's an interesting fact. One question had less than 40% accuracy. Can you guess which one that was? That was number 10. So let's see. Oh, my goodness, y'all. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven questions where we got 70% or better. Seven firecrackers. Can we do it? In a row. Seven firecrackers in a row. We're going to have to warm it up for a little while. Warm it up. Oh, man. We got to. Mm, look at that. Warm it up. Here we go. All right. Seven in a row. Okay. My speedy guns out folks. You're going to have to slow down for us. One. Two. Two and a half. Two and three fourths. Three. Oh, so close. They were like, I don't know what number we're on. Oh, stop. <laughs> you did a great job. I am so so excited about this. That is amazing. We have set two records today. That's exciting. What do you need to do now? Grab a sticky note. Grab a sticky note. Go ahead and put your iPads on the empty desk, please. You can go ahead and X out of it. Thank you. Grab a sticky note, and I would like for you to think a few minutes on this question. Think a minute on this question and write down your answer to how are the product and power rule similar on a little sticky note. How are the product and power rules similar? Go. Can I get a volunteer to share with me what you said about how the product rule and the power rule are similar? Uh, Keith. Okay, very good. Kaden, what do you have? Hello, they are both rules, that's what I'm saying. Jaden, what you got? Okay, very good. I like that. Okay, so here's what I need you to do. I have placed on your desk a self-reflection paper. Okay, take your sticky note and put it on top of your classwork. Take your sticky note and put it on top of your classwork. When we finish today, you're going to take that classwork, your sticky note, and your self-reflection paper to the basket, okay? So once we finish, put your name on everything so they can get your credit. Like Beyonce said, if you, want, if you wanted a grade, you put your name on it. Yeah. Okay, so take a minute and reflect. The self-reflection questions are there in front of you, so take a few minutes. And the name of the song that we're going to listen to is called Reflection. I know. I'm with it. It's one of my favorites.
Okay. All right, match me. <laughs> it's okay. Your other left. I'm a little challenged too. Okay. So uh, I'd like for a few of you to share what you said on your self reflection. You can tell me what your question was and then tell me your answer. That'd be great. Uh, EJ. Yes. So what you need to do better is not get upset when you miss a question. I like that. Caden. Hint, hint, there was no shade to anybody on this side of the room. I'm just going to say that out there. Okay, Kaden. What do I need to do better with working with people? Because I work too fast. Sometimes you do work too fast. But, hey, you're working. You're a work in progress, and I'm really proud of your work today. Okay, uh, Jaden. Um, what I need to do better? I need to learn it or more so I can master it every time I own the problem. Yeah, so you need to learn more so that you can master it every time. I like that. I like that. Uh, Nate. I might only do that next time. Remember that it's the last one. Yes, that's really good. All right, so uh, thank you so much for sharing. This is what I need you to do. My A's need to take the iPads back to the back door. And then if I can get number ones to get everybody's papers, including your self-reflection papers, and take it to the basket.